Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And I wanted to make this video because I had a friend sincerely ask me, hey man, why didn't you do a trailer reaction to Black Panther Wakanda Forever? And I was like, you know, I tried. I actually tried. I, I started recording and I got emotional. And it's not just because of Chadwick Boseman. Um, you know, for those who don't know, like my history with characters and comic books and stuff, um, I, I actually am a, a big fan of Black Panther. Uh, when I was growing up, I had access to the first comics I was given. A lot of the characters, the main characters, were were black. Uh, John Stewart was Green Lantern at the time when I was jumping into DC Comics. Uh, Rhodey, War Machine, temporarily had become Iron Man for a while. Uh, Storm was a major player in the X-Men stuff, and I loved all the stories with her and Forge. Um, and all the, the stuff they did with that and her, you know, being from Africa and kind of her background and being a thief as a kid. And I was really just pulled in by a lot of these amazing characters. And Fantastic Four was a book. It was a collection that I actually inherited that I had the pretty much the entire run that Stanley and Jack Kirby did, which was like 105 or so issues uh, plus. And in that run was the first appearance of Black Panther, first appearance of Inhumans. That's why I have an Inhumans tattoo. Like, I love that run. It's it's probably to me the quintessential comic book run of all time for me. It, it, everything I love about Marvel comes from that run. Even some of the team ups with Spider Man and the Thing uh, from Marvel Two and One that you know kind of branched out of Fantastic Four, um, Silver Surfer, Galactus, um, and obviously Black Panther and the Inhumans, like and Doctor Doom, my favorite comic book villain. And so you know I'm such a big fan of the character, and then. I, you know, and again, a lot of these memories are gone, you know, like I, I, I've read through some of them through journals. Some of them are stories my mom told me. And then in 2008, uh, I grew up really being in love with films that Reggie Hudlin made, uh, Reginald Hudlin, who did, uh, you know, House Party, did Bebe's Kids, did a lot of stuff that I really admired, uh, you know. And so when I got into filmmaking and stuff in 2008, I ended up working at BET when Reggie Hudlin was president of BET. And at that time, he was writing Black Panther. And I got to talk to him a few times about Black Panther's characters. And I got to, you know, a couple comic books I had brought to get signed. And then I never, like, I think like a year later, I still never got him back. And then I had my aneurysm in 2010. And then I completely forgot about everything. I come back to LA in 2011. And I'm, you know, trying to get my life back together and to some degree, um, but completely lost and confused and fumbling and making mistakes and not understanding things and I ended up getting let go from a job and then went and basically begged Golden Apple Comics to hire me because otherwise I would be so poor that I couldn't even leave Los Angeles I would have that little money to even go back home and so they were very kind enough they were treated me like family and they gave me a job and at that job Reg, <laughs> Reggie Hudlin came in and we talked, and then he was like, wait a minute, I think I remember you. And then we talked some more, and then, you know, I got to talk to him every time I saw him at the store, which wasn't often, but enough. And uh, and the fact that he remembered me and remembered I was a big Black Panther fan, and I would ask him questions, you know, like, well, what are you going to do next? And at that time, you know, he was brainstorming about Shuri, you know, uh, taking over as the new Black Panther. And this movie pulls a lot from some of his comics. Uh, the first movie did too. Um, the first movie also pulled a lot from uh, the Christopher Priest Black Panther comics, the Marvel Knights one from the late 90s, which is amazing. If you've never read it, it's amazing. It introduced the Dora Milaje. Uh, Everett Ross, I believe, was introduced in that run. But Reggie also uses the Dora Milaje. He, he brought Everett Ross back. I'm going to do a separate video uh, soon about um, two of my favorite runs of Reggie's uh, in his Black Panther run because he wrote the character for like five years six years uh, maybe a little bit more than that um, and he his first run was called who is Black Panther and I can't wait to talk about that we're going to do another video on it and then he then also his first story arc where he had Shuri take up the mantle um, uh, called the deadliest of the species I believe we're going to so I'm going to do a double re, double comic review and just break down those two stories and tell you why I love them so much um but in this video, I just wanted to explain, like, watching that, seeing Namor on screen um, reinterpreted in such a cool way. I mean, Moon Knight kind of brought in these gods, right? Like, so did Black Panther, the first one with Bost, you know, and uh, 
and Sekhmet, I think, like they, he mentioned some of the other gods that they worship. Um, and then in Moon Knight, they talked about, you know, the, the astral plane and all these other things and kind of tying the, all that together. And then now you have an, like an Aztec slash Mayan god and Kuku Khan, uh, which is a real thing that was worshipped as a serpent god uh, for the Mayan and Aztec like, you know, culture. And then you have that amazing song in the trailer by Sampa the Great, which was, I bought, I immediately, after watching the trailer like 30 times, not recording, a, I started recording the first one and I just turned it off and I said, I can't do it. I got way too emotional and not to the point where I was just crying. It was just like, I couldn't breathe. I kept thinking and trying to remember the probably the highlight of my life in 2008 being next to Reggie Hudlin while he's thinking of these ideas and getting little glimpses of them and him talking about them. And then all that being erased and then running into him years later, it's like, it just brought like a lot of emotions back and seeing like Wakanda being flooded. That was something that happened in one of the runs around the time, uh, dark rain and Reggie were like, uh, Avengers or X-Men, I think too, when they did that comic with Bendis, there was like Namor was flooding Wakanda and Shuri, you know, was taking up the mantle and Dr. Doom was there and there was uh, T'Challa was put in a coma and there's all these things like that just and Storm, you know, Mary, she, he, Reggie was the one who came up with Storm marrying T'Challa, which I loved so much. I, I loved seeing Aurora Monroe Storm go from a thief to a queen um, because I always saw her, always saw her as a queen and I always thought Forge was stupid for letting her get away. Um, but I like Forge too. He's a great character, but, but Storm was just like her being a part of this story too. Like, so I don't know. I just, I got overwhelmed and I couldn't do it. I just, I, I stopped recording and I said, I can't do it. And so I just watched the trailer over and over and over. And then I must've watched 50 or so people like the next day when they started being posted, 50 people's reactions, you know? <laughs> And I, I'm just like a mess. I'm like getting emotional. I couldn't breathe. I'm some, sometimes crying, sometimes not. Like just get, but just feeling all these things and, 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 and my mind trying to remember a time that must have been so great for me and, and, and failing at, rem at getting those memories back, you know, still. And then thinking about Chadwick and, and how amazingly talented he was. And that reminds me of Brandon Lee and how he was taken too soon because it started to, you know, domino effect of all these other young, talented people that I looked up to that were taken, you know, too soon. Um, and the kind of the impact Chadwick had on me when I saw him as T'Challa for the first time in Civil War and how just so happy I was that this guy took this role so seriously and was so charismatic and, and, and so uh, played the role so well with, you know, with uh, humility and, and grace and I just, it was too much. It was just too much. And so I just kept watching the trailer and watching the trailer to the point where I'm like, now I can't even record a, a reaction because I've, I, you know, I've already seen it a million times. Um, I've noticed all the little Easter eggs in there. Like, uh, cause I had a theory a while back that, you know, I thought a good way to honor Chadwick Boseman and Black Panther was that if more than one person wore a, a, a nanotech Panther suit in this movie, if you had like Shuri be the main one because that's the comics, you know, but then also have like Nakia have one and uh, Okoye have one. Um, and then obviously Riri is going to have her suit, I guess. And that was kind of neat watching everyone's reaction videos and a lot of people recognizing Riri Williams. Um, I'll be honest. I knew Ironheart the name. I don't even know if I knew her name was Riri Williams. I'm, I'm not very well versed in some of the newer characters outside of like Miles and Spider-Gwen. Like I think the Spider-Man universe is the only ones I've kind of dipped my toe into as far as the newer younger characters and i know miles was on a team with riri i think uh, on champions but i didn't read that run i think mark wade wrote it and uh, I, I never got around to reading it um but i i was so neat to see a character so new get that many reactions like a lot of those reaction videos people were like riri you know they're like all excited i'm like wow that's amazing that's great like that's what you want when you're creating new characters in comics, you hope that they have an impact or that people get excited to see them translated in a movie or something. And uh, to see that for a character like her, who again, I didn't even know her real name until like not too long ago. So I was like, wow, that's that's great for that character. And that's great um, for possibly this movie bringing in what I was thinking was 
you know, at the end of the first movie to honor Killmonger, they kind of opened up schools in neighborhoods where, where kids don't get a lot of advantages um, or a lot of help. And so they opened up all these schools, you know, to kind of teach, you know, Wakandan ways and, and kind of push towards technology and kids getting involved with technology. And I was thinking like, wow, that'd be cool if Shuri is like a, a mentor type to Riri. And, but then after, you know, losing her brother in the story, she's kind of a mess and Riri is, um, you know, kind of branches off on her own and, and goes, no, I'm going to help out. Just like Shuri making, you know, costumes for her brother. I'm going to make a, an iron costume for me so I can help out or something. And I, I was just trying to think of all these possibilities for this movie and, and what they're going to do with Namor and, and all these things. And I just, again, I just, I started to get overwhelmed. And so uh, what I did was on Wednesday, I did, I had to do inventory at uh, work. Well, Blue did. And, um, and so we were out late on uh, Tuesday night and then we had to do inventory, I think again on Wednesday. So I had the morning to myself before he went into work and I went to the comic store and I found this. Uh, if you don't pick these up, uh, you should, by the way, uh, if you read comic books uh, and you want to take a, you know, take a trip down memory lane and read some of the classics, these Mighty Marvel Masterworks, I own the two Fantastic Four volumes that are out right now. And of course I had to buy, you know, the, uh, the Black Panther one. I know it has a Fantastic Four cover, but this is Black Panther volume one. And it features the first issues of Fantastic Four that he was in, uh, 52, 53, 54, and 56, I believe. Um, then there's also the Captain America Tales of Suspense issues where him and Captain America fight and then team up. There's some Avengers issues in here where he joins the Avengers. You have like Ape Man and Baku, you know, like those characters showing up for the first time. The issue with Daredevil. I mean, there's some really cool classic stuff. Like I think like the first 10 or so or 12 appearances of T'Challa in comic books and Wakanda in this and it's only $15.99 so yeah look it up on your local comic store Marvel Mighty Marvel Masterworks Black Panther Volume 1 but they do these for Spider-Man Daredevil so if you ever want to go back and read the classic stories that kind of led us all here that that gave birth to in a very real way to all these movies that are now coming out and these characters that are being seen on screen for the first time you know, go back and, and pick these these up and uh, they're they're worth every penny. And I was reading through this and it reminded me, you know, like I was like, yeah, you know, when I was a kid, you know, my mom was telling me, she's like, you loved X-Men, you love Fantastic Four, you loved, you know, the DC characters as well, obviously Green Lantern. But she was like, you know, you would just sit in a corner and read stacks of stuff, even the books you weren't supposed to touch like these ones because they were valuable. You still would grab and you would hold very delicately and you would read them and you would just get immersed. And so when I was reading this, I'm like, man, I even through a brain aneurysm, even through a memory rewrite, there's still something in me that cannot let go of these characters and still gets can still feels connected to them on every level. Um, so reading this, I was like, this must have what it, it must have been what it was like when I was a kid, just sitting in the corner reading uh, these old comic books and just being like absolutely taken to another world and the fact that these movies are doing that for a new generation stuff just it makes me proud I really when I came into that first Black Panther movie I was so enamored I was just so happy that they did that one right I mean yeah some of the CG I didn't like and I had a couple criticisms but overall I was like they tried to make Black Panther a dozen times before and every time they tried it just sounded like it wasn't very good <laughs> like uh, Wesley Snipes was going to play him at one point there was other actors and Every time I heard about a Black Panther, you know, uh, story, like when I was going back and rereading of what they were going to do, I'm like, I wouldn't have liked any of those movies. But this one, that first one, I was like, overall, I loved it. And I love the message that at the end, he learned a lesson from his villain, which is something I wrote in Soul Star. And that's something I really love when they do that in stories. And so, you know, T'Challa grew because of the beliefs of his enemy. And now you have this movie where, if Killmonger was still alive, he'd probably be proud of Shuri because her and T'Challa opened up these schools to make sure that a second Killmonger couldn't be created um, through similar scenarios, that nobody felt betrayed or excluded. Like they, they got a chance to use their intellect and, and skills to become something more. And I think if Killmonger, you know, got resurrected or was still alive, I think he would have respect for Shuri on some level for seeing her bring someone like Riri 
into a point where she's now making Iron Man armor, which most governments couldn't even do while Tony Stark was alive. And now you have this young girl who's super smart, much like Tony was super smart when he was young. And it's just, it's neat seeing legacy. Like this movie seems very much about legacy and what we leave behind and the, and the, the, the positives that come from the things we leave behind, the positives that Tony left behind and, you know, and T'Challa have now, you know, bring forth Shuri and Riri and all these other characters. And I'm, I'm very excited for this film. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm ex so that's why I couldn't do the reaction. I couldn't share it because I was just kind of like shell shocked and I, I didn't speak when it was on the first time. I, like I said, I cried at uh, a p one or two parts and then I just got frozen and I was just like, well, this would be a very boring reaction video. So instead I thought I would just make this video where I talk about why I am a Black Panther fan, what it, the character means to me and plug that this book is out there for $15.99 and you should go buy it. And it's amazing. It's it's absolutely just some of the best storytelling stuff because this is where it starts. And then stuff like the Christopher Priest run and uh, stuff like the uh, the Jungle Tale stuff they did after this. Um, and, the, you know, and what Reggie did and, and what's being done today with ta Coates and other writers, all that wouldn't be here. That world building wouldn't continue without these great stories that, that were the foundation, the bedrock of um, of these great characters. So please, whether it's this Fantastic Four, you know, Black Panther book, Mighty Marvel Masterworks, um, or if it's, you know, um, the Christopher Priest run or whatever, whatever, this week, go go pick up a Black Panther comic book and let me know what you think of it in the comments. And if you've read any of these stories, let me know what you think of them in the comments down below. And like I said, coming up probably in a couple days or a week or so, I will do a double comic book review of who is the Black Panther and the deadliest of species of the species, um, which is the the first Reggie Hudlin uh, T'Challa story that he wrote, which is amazing. And I can't wait to talk about it. And the first Shuri story. Um, and hopefully it won't spoil too much of the movies, but I'll try to restrain, you know, and refrain from use uh, to talk about too many details of them. But uh, but I do want to get into why I love them so much. So for sure. And then also I have a, a, a separate Black Panther issue, like a one off issue that takes place in the alternate reality. I might do a review on that too. And then I'm also going to do some supernatural Marvel stuff reviews as we get closer to Halloween uh, for sure. So anyway, that's just my thoughts and what I wanted to get out there. Very long, probably video. I'll try to edit it down the best I can. Um, but this is just, I love this character. I'm excited for any version of the character. I'm really excited to see Namor, especially the way they're reinterpreting him. I think the guy looks amazing. I love the costume, the wings on his feet, like the way he skis, you know, when he's like, he's like ice skating uphill when he's like going through the sky and stuff. It looks cool. It's different. It's uh, it separates him from, you know, like an Aquaman Atlantean character. And I think that's great. Uh, but it's also tying into what Marvel's trying to do with gods and beliefs and stuff in the Marvel universe by bringing in Aztec and Mayan culture, I think is really smart. And I think Ryan Coogler is a very smart filmmaker and, and I can't imagine how hard it must have been to try to make this film without Chadwick, but everybody came together and they did. And the trailer so far, just both of them blew me away. And so I imagine the movie will too. I got my tickets already. I'm going to go see it opening day and I'll definitely review it for you guys opening weekend. Uh, I'll probably do a non-spoiler and then do a spoiler like a week later. So that way you have, hopefully you have time to see it before I put up my spoiler review. So thank you so much. You know, if you have any comments you want to make, that's fine down below. And as always, we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.